Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at why and how to retrofit your HVAC refrigeration system to the next generation of environmentally friendly refrigerants. So we're going to look at why retrofit, what to check, which refrigerants to choose, and also briefly, how to retrofit this. Guys, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Dan Foss, our sponsor for today's episode. Dan Foss is your go-to source for information and resources that can help you through the cooling industry's transition to natural and climate-friendly refrigerants. They have a deep understanding of all the new regulations and their effects, and they're ready to share their knowledge and solutions with you. They've also made helpful tools like the Refrigerant Retrofit Guide, the Low GWP tool, and also the Cool Selector 2 app, which is available for free on their website. You can access them now by visiting refrigerants.danfoss.com. Now the first thing we want to look at is obviously why retrofit. And this really comes down to two issues. The first reason is that all the laws and regulations around the world are changing on which refrigerants can be used. And all of these laws and regulation changes are to do with the effects that the last generations of refrigerants had on the atmosphere and environment. And that's why the market is heading towards a more environmentally friendly and natural refrigerants. And of course, the second reason is going to be finance. Not all businesses are going to be in a position to replace their entire refrigeration system. Many will want and also need to maximize the life of their initial investment on the refrigeration asset. So this means you're going to have to retrofit if you want to keep that device. There are some considerations for retrofitting though. The original system was designed to perform according to the specific thermodynamic properties of the old refrigerants. So the performance and efficiency of the system will be different after you retrofit this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is assess if the components that we already have will work with an alternative refrigerant. For all the items coming up, please do check the data plates on the components and record the manufacturer, the model number, and also the serial numbers. This data is essential and you'll need to use this to check with the supplier the compatibility of the components with the new refrigerant. If you have a packaged unit, then this is going to be a really easy task for you. But if your system is made up from many you know, replacement components or even a self-built system, then this is going to take you some time. So it's important that you contact a specialist such as Denfoss. Now, while you're searching around the system, do make a log of all the normal operating conditions. You'll want to record the pressure and temperature readings from as many parts of the system as you can. Pay particular attention to the suction line and also the discharge line of the compressor, as well as the evaporator and condenser. The superheat and also the compressor amps are also uh, very important information. So once you've collected all this data, keep it safe because you're going to need to use this to calibrate your new refrigerant and the new system. So the first component we want to assess is the compressor, as this is the heart of the system which pumps the refrigerant around to all of the major components. It's also the most expensive component in the system and it's where almost all the electricity will be consumed. So it's very important to get this right. The cooling capacity will change with the use of a new refrigerant. So you'll need to check that the new cooling capacity will be capable of meeting your demands. You'll also want to know the limits of the compressor's temperature and pressure to ensure that the compressor is capable of handling the change over to these new refrigerants. Additionally, the oil used by the compressor will likely need to be changed to suit the new refrigerant. Next, we want to check the condenser, as this is where all the unwanted heat from your system will be ejected into the atmosphere. Remember, the condenser will need to reject all the heat picked up from the evaporator, as well as the heat produced by the compressor. You'll need to check that the condenser will meet the capacity of the compressor. If the replacement refrigerant has a high glide, then the condenser may need an increase in the surface area to suit the lower mean temperature difference. Then we want to check the expansion device. Now if your system has a thermostatic type expansion valve, which most will, then the expansion valve will most likely not be capable of uh, handling the new refrigerant. The general rule of thumb is that if you compare the two refrigerant charts and there is more than a 3K difference in the pressure temperature charts, then you have to replace the valve. If it's under this, then you might be able to adjust this if you have the capability to do so. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to replace the valve. You'll also want to ensure that any other valves, such as pressure control valves, can also be uh, changed or adjusted. Moving around the system, we'll also want to check the evaporator. If the new refrigerant is a high glide type, then this may cause a higher dehumidification rate as parts of the evaporator will have a lower temperature. 
Unfortunately, any gaskets used around the system, such as those in the solenoid valves, the Schrader valves, and the O-rings, um, these are almost certainly going to have to be replaced with new ones because the current oil slash refrigerant will have caused the gasket to swell, and when the refrigerant and oil is replaced, the gasket will then start to actually leak. So to get around all that, you're just going to have to replace all these gaskets and seals. Now the oil you currently use in the system is also going to have to be replaced. And it's good practice to change the oil filters in your system also if it has these. For this, you'll need to decide which retrofit refrigerant you will be using and then finding the corresponding compatible oil recommended by the supplier. But you'll also want to check that this oil is compatible with the compressor by speaking with your manufacturer. We will also need to check the pipework is suitable for the new refrigerant because this will likely have different density and enthalpy which will result in different velocities and also pressure drops. The suction line and oil return lines are of particular importance. The controller may also need to be adjusted, especially for the superheat, as this will change with the new refrigerant also. So what refrigerants can you move over to? Well, the type of refrigerant you use will depend on two things. Number one, which type of system you have, and number two, how long the system will be operational for. Now I've given some examples up on the screen now of how that might look going forward. Um, these are just examples and I've kind of categorized them there as well into the different types of systems. But do check with your refrigerant specialist as they should be able to provide the best solution for you. So how are you going to retrofit? Well, there's a six easy steps on uh, the basics of how to retrofit it. Number one is obviously recover the oil and also refill the compressors. You want to drain the oil from the compressor as well as also the oil separators and the accumulators and record the quantity of oil recovered. Speak to your refrigerant supplier as they should be able to help you dispose of this safely because the oil will likely contain small quantities of refrigerants. Step two will be recover the refrigerant. So you will then need to recover the refrigerant and record its weight. If you are not suitably trained and competent to do this, then do not attempt to do so and leave this to a qualified professional. There are huge penalty fines if you release the refrigerant into the atmosphere. Point three will be change of components. So for this, you're going to want to replace your seals and your components, such as the expansion valve and change your filters. And then you need to adjust your settings to suit the new refrigerant pressures. Remember to include the safety valves and the control valves. Point number four will be evacuate the system and also perform a leak check. So you'll need to evacuate the system to remove all the air, the moisture and the other contaminants. And then you'll also want to perform a leak detection test to ensure your system is sealed. Now to do this, you just need to isolate the vacuum pump, and if it doesn't hold the pressure, then obviously you have a leak. Point five is refill with the new refrigerant. So for this, you'll recharge the system with the new refrigerant, and speak with your refrigerant supplier as they will guide you on the initial charge size. Remember, if you're using a blended refrigerant, then you'll have to charge the system in the liquid state. Again, leave this part to the qualified specialists, as refrigerants can be very dangerous and also expensive, if you were to release it into the atmosphere. And the sixth step is to monitor and adjust. Test the new system by starting it and monitoring the performance and adjust the refrigerant charge if needed. Remember the performance will not be the same with the new refrigerant. You want to check the oil and also the filters as this will return any dirt picked up around the system and also verify the superheat setting. Now don't forget to also complete the paperwork or the logbooks and also label the system permanently with a new type of refrigerant that you've used. This is a very important step, so please remember to do so. All right guys, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and it helped you. Just before we go, I'd like to say one more quick thanks to Danfoss for sponsoring this episode and remind you to check out their free refrigerant resources available at refrigerants.danfoss.com.